can see if you mouse over any of those, you see the inputs and outputs. Now, if we go back to our web service and we attempt to connect without going over SSL, what will happen if we refresh the page is that we're blocked with access denied. We're not allowed to connect to the service. What we're going to do now is create a client certificate, which we're going to use for authentication at the browser. Again, we create the common name by which the client will be known. We're going to call this REST Client. We don't have to put in all of the attributes here. We're going to put in an organization name as well. We'll see that later when we look at the certificate being used for client authentication. When we choose to sign the certificate. We're actually going to sign it with the public and private keys that we used before. So that then means that the certificate we created before becomes the issuer certificate. This maps with how we set up our demo and in a real life situation normally you'd be using a third party certificate authority such as VeriSign or a corporate CA as being the trusted issuer of certificates. A REST client now is shown within the list of other certificates. We're now going to try to connect to the service over SSL. Our policy says that you must authenticate. We're asked here to choose the certificate to authenticate. This is the REST client certificate that we just made. We choose that certificate and then that will mean that we're allowed to connect. Notice that's the REST client. And now we can connect. We're now allowed back into the REST ser web service and we can use it. We type in the value. We get it com the value come back. We put in the SQL injection and we see forbidden come back as well. Again, if we click on the Firefox settings, we can see information about SSL being used and the authentication in place there. Next, what we're going to do is add rate throttling to our REST web service. This is often used in the Web 2.0 area, whereby if you're exposing a service to the internet, you don't want people to use it in an unreasonable manner if they're using too many lookups against a search service or product lookup service, for example. We're going to say if there's more than 10 requests to this REST service in a minute, then we're going to block the messages. We also choose to cache the information so that if there's multiple XML gateways, they can all share that information. So if five requests go to one gateway, five requests go to another gateway, then we still know that there have been 10 requests in all, and we can block based on that. We're also doing the rate throttling depending on the identity of the client which we've identified using a certificate. If we block a client, we're going to then set the fault handler to be a policy shortcut to sending back HTTP 403 forbidden. If we repeatedly click on the text here, we see access denied comes back. We have gone over the allowable number of connections. Looking back at our diagram, you can see the XML gateway is now providing authentication, SSL, threat scanning, and rate limiting for the backend REST web service. This is application firewalling for a REST web service. We look back at the agenda to recap on the various different items we've seen. We've seen what Web 2.0 is, how the XML HTTP request object is used, and we've seen the XML gateway from Vordell in action. If you'd like an evaluation copy of the XML gateway, if you'd like to find out more, look at Vordell's website or contact info at vordell.com.